This is section 3.2, the derivative as a function. And in this section, we learn a bunch of rules of how to take the derivative without having to use that really long limit definition that we learned in the previous section. Solving the derivatives using the limit definition took a really long time. No one liked doing them that way. So now we're learning more of the calculus way of how to solve derivatives directly. All right, so this is number 25 in your book. It gives us this function, g of z, and it's asking us to find the derivative. So let's go ahead, go through it. So we find the derivative, or we can write that d over dz of this function. And in order to do that, I'm going to split it up into three different parts. So I have the derivative of this first part. Um, so d over dz. Remember, when you have a constant, you can just pull that out to the front. So I'll have 7 times what's left over, z to the minus 5 over 14, plus the derivative of the second part, which is just z to the minus 5, plus the derivative of the last part, which is just 9. Okay, now I'm going to go through and use those derivative rules that I learned in this section. So looking at this first part, I have 7 times, whenever I have an exponent, remember my rule tells me, bring the exponent to the front, and then subtract 1. So I bring this exponent to the front, so I just have minus 5 over 14 times z. When I subtract 1 from minus 5 over 14, I'm going to end up getting minus 19 over 14. Now I go ahead and do the same thing with my second part. I bring the exponent to the front, so I have minus 5 in the front times z to the minus 6. That's minus 5 minus 1 gives me 6. And then in this last part, I have the derivative of 9. Remember, the derivative of any constant is just 0. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. Over here, I have 7 times minus 5. That will give me minus 35 over 14. z to the minus 19 over 14. Um, and then minus 5 times z to the minus 6. Nothing else I can simplify. So that's it for this problem. The derivative of g of z is this function. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.